Not right now. No one on yet. That is so Good evening. Good evening. Afternoon, evening, right on the cusp. <laughs> it's an honor to lead you in this service. This is something I try to do every year. Missed it last year because of maternity leave. Um, but it's good to be back. This is an important time on the longest night of the year for people to gather um, and to share in the reality that Christmas isn't always merry all the time for all people. And so we find community here and we find hope and light here. Would you join me in the responsive reading in the bulletin? The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness and the light to shine. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Later this evening, we'll use these candles to honor the loved ones that we're thinking of in this season. But for tonight, I'll set four of them aside to remember that we are centered in a season of anticipation, the season of Advent. And so as we light the candle of hope, we remember God's promise that those who live in a land of deep darkness will see the light of the Savior. And as we light the candle of peace, we remember our loved ones who are released from the pain and struggles they endured in this life. We rest on God's promise that they are at peace and one day we will be free. As we light the candle of joy, we remember those who filled our lives with laughter. We celebrate God's promise that one day joy will return to our hearts as God meets us in our grief and pieces us back together. And as we light the candle of love, we remember all those who we have loved and lost. We trust that God's love, even more than theirs, is a love that is freely given to us. Let's 
join our hearts in a moment of prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for your constant love and for the blessings of this day. We know that even when we cannot see or feel you, still you are there. Help us to remember you and to listen for your voice in the words of family, friends, and strangers. <coughs> Kindle our hearts and awaken our hope that we may know you as you reveal yourself in the world and in our lives. <clears throat> let the light of your Holy Spirit shine like these candles in the darkness, lighting the way for all who feel despairing, lost, or forgotten. And grant that it may come to dwell so deeply in our hearts that when we leave this place, your light may shine on for us and for those we meet along the way. Amen. <coughs> Oh. 
Our scripture reading this evening comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is a message from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, every year I use this text for a very specific couple of reasons. One is that it's, it's a pretty common Christmas text that predicts the birth of Jesus in pretty clear and specific terms, but also because it's got a little phrase in there that catches me every time. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness. This is where I get a little nerdy and teach you some Hebrew for half a second. I'm not actually going to try to pronounce the word, but what I will teach you is that the, the Hebrew word underneath the word deep darkness, the Hebrew word behind that phrase is used twice in the entire Bible. Once here and once in Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, valley of the shadow of death, land of deep darkness same Hebrew word behind it. And so when the prophet Isaiah is speaking to a people who are walking in darkness, he's not just thinking of standard everyday darkness. Thank you so much. I promise I'm not sick. There was a little tip on my throat. He's, he's not speaking to a people who are experiencing your everyday just kind of bluesy moment. He's, he's talking to those who are in the shadow of the, of the valley of death. And he's speaking a word of extravagant hope. On them, light has shined. And so embedded in this text are two truths that I think are important for us to name. One is that darkness is real. And the other is that it doesn't last forever. If you're here, there's a chance I don't need to tell you that darkness is real, but, but also there's some freedom in hearing it said out loud that what you're experiencing is true and profound and pervasive and real. And it doesn't matter how many times you hear Mariah Carey's voice on the radio or how many commercials you see for Christmas cheer on TV or how many peppermint mocha lattes you drink, that, that deep darkness can get into our bones and into our souls, especially if we are experiencing grief. So truth number one, darkness is real. Truth number two, 
it doesn't last forever. This is the promise of the whole of scripture, right from the very first moments of creation. First, there was darkness, then God said light, then there was light. From the very first moments of creation, the Bible is full of this pervasive truth that darkness doesn't last forever. And Isaiah's prophecy lifts that out with words of hope and light. In fact, Isaiah is so certain of this second truth, that light is yet to come, that he does something a little different than most prophets, a little differently. Most of the prophets, when they speak of the things that will happen, the, the unfolding of God's work in the world, they speak in the future tense. God will do this. The Lord will accomplish that. A, a Messiah will come. But Isaiah takes a different approach. He speaks as though it's already happened. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah is so sure of this truth, this promise, that he speaks as though it's already been accomplished. And this is, this is an unusual kind of light. Um, for what the people were expecting and what the people were hoping for. Isaiah is talking to a people who are entangled in war right now. And so when, when he starts talking about the yoke of, of your burden, the bar across your shoulders, the rod of your oppressor has been broken, they're like, yeah, freedom. And then he says, for all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood, and they're like, yeah, victory. He says, those shall be burned in fire for a child has been born. Isaiah is not offering the military victory that the people are hoping for. He's offering the opposite, an end to all suffering. This is a freedom that comes not as a, a vanquishing of one's enemies as they thought of it, but, but as something completely and totally unexpected. This is a salvation even that comes from a baby. A, a child will be born for us. This is the salvation you're promising us, Isaiah. This is the hope you give us. Not a mighty military leader, not a powerful king as we know it. A child will be born. But of course, our savior would come that way. For the enemies that the prophet imagined were the foes to be vanquished were not the the real enemies the people faced and, and the oppression from which the people needed to be freed was not what maybe they thought it was. Of course, our savior would come as a child for the real enemy that Jesus came to vanquish was death. In Christ, death is no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more when Christ's work comes to completion. The one to overcome death, pure God though he may have been, would have had to come into the world by way of birth, because isn't that the opposite of death? And the real oppression that he came to free people from, you see, was, was not that necessarily of, of foreign enemies, though it may have come by way of foreign enemies. The real oppression he came to free people from was that of human suffering in its broadest and deepest terms. Of course, the savior would have to come as a child, as a human, as one who would become human and suffer. That we might not be alone in our grief or sorrow and pain. We tend to think of Jesus as this, this guy who had it all together all the time. And we forget the parts of the scriptures where Jesus weeps at the death of a loved one. We forget the parts of the scriptures sometimes where Jesus is suffering in the garden before his crucifixion and begs God to make it stop. Jesus knew our suffering because Jesus experienced our suffering. And so of course it would be right that the savior, the one to undo all of the suffering in the world would come as one who would know what he had to work with. 
of course, the savior of the world would come in a way that would promise us hope, light, and life. And that's the promise of the scriptures, not just from the beginning, but all the way through to the very end, the end of Revelation, the promise of the new heaven and the new earth, where there will be no more suffering, no more pain, no more crying when God's plan comes to, to completion. So this is our hope for this night, that we who are grieving will not suffer for the rest of our lives. We will grieve for the rest of our lives, but we won't always feel like this. One day we will join our loved ones in the unbridled presence of God. Darkness will not last forever. And though our sorrow may last for this night, this longest night, we know that joy will come in the morning and that light will always find its way. So take heart along with me this night. Know that you are not alone. Jesus has come, has experienced all that you are experiencing in these moments. Know that Jesus has come to vanquish the enemy called death and to release us from the oppression of pain and sorrow. And that even on this, the darkest night of the year, we can trust that darkness will not last forever. A new day will dawn, and another day after that, until all will be light and our joy will be made complete. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to invite us now to uh, come as we wish to light a candle or candles in honor of our loved ones. If you wish, you may choose to kneel for a moment um, and then just take a bit of light and light a candle in honor of those you remember this day. Thank you. 
And then would you turn to number 700 in the pinball and join me? We pray to you for one another in our need and for all everywhere who mourn with us this day. Even in the stillness of this place and of this moment, our hearts are in chaos. We may be lonely, despairing, afraid of how the next few days will feel. Even so, we know that in you there is hope, peace, love, and even joy. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you, and we join our voices together in the prayer Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you join me in singing the hymn of promise? In the Each of us this day is even if you cannot see the light or feel the joy, know that it is there. Even if it's something God alone can see, it is there. God's promises are true, and even the longest night won't last forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.